Long before the era of supermodels, there was a prominent figure in the fashion industry named Margot Hemingway. Give me everything, right in the left. Given her name, height, and striking appearance, it was clear that she had all the qualities to become a successful star. Unfortunately, it seemed like her destiny was already determined. Being part of the Hemingway family, known for their famous name and the notorious Hemingway curse, Margot and her relatives were haunted by this curse, which tragically led to her untimely death. In this video, we would take a closer look at Margot and the Hemingway family, her personal life, and tragic end. The life of Margot Hemingway. Margot Hemingway's name has been highly regarded, and here is why. Margot Louise Hemingway was born on February 16, 1954. She quickly became known for her stunning and otherworldly beauty, captivating the hearts and minds of countless people. However, beneath all the glitz and achievements, there was a life filled with difficult personal challenges, struggles with addiction, and mental health issues. Margot Hemingway's story started in Portland, Oregon, where she was born to Jack Hemingway, the oldest son of the famous American writer Ernest Hemingway, and his wife Byra Louise, who is also known as Puck. Born Margot, she changed the spelling to Margot when she found out that her parents drank the wine from the famous French vineyard Chateau Margot on the night she was conceived. Margot was definitely definitely shaped by the rich literary heritage of the Hemingway family while she was growing up. Her grandfather made a huge impact on American literature, which was something she was really proud of, but it also put a lot of pressure on her. Margot was a really beautiful child, which hinted at the successful modeling career she would have in the future. She's really tall, like six feet one inch tall, and her eyes are this amazing shade of blue that you can't help but get lost in. It's what makes her stand out from everyone else. From an early age, it was obvious that she had all the qualities needed to become famous and successful. Her life behind closed doors. They appeared to be the ideal family in pictures, but their private life was far from perfect. Actually, the Hemingways were experiencing significant difficulties. It seems like Margot's mother never really loved her father, and she coped with this by partying and drinking excessively. Unfortunately, the children had to bear the brunt of this behavior and were deeply affected by it. In the late 1960s, they had three girls, Margot's older sister Joan and her much younger sister Marielle. However, instead of bringing them closer, expanding the family family only made their problems worse. Here's another clear example of why it's not a good idea to stay together just for the sake of the children. Oh, I met him at some party. An opening back in New York. Come on, sit down. Could it have altered the path of their supposed destiny? Maybe, but there's no way to be certain. In 1961, Margot's grandfather, Ernest, sadly ended his own life on their family farm in Idaho. This tragic event had a profound impact on their family, causing both emotional and lasting damage. Soon enough, Margot wanted to escape from her difficult home situation. She discovered that using her attractive appearance to gain entry into the nearby bar at the young age of 14... I hate it! was the most effective way to do so. However, this was only the start of her rebellious behavior and desire for attention. According to Margot's younger sister, Marielle, Margot would often go out at any time of the day or night. Look, Mr. Hefner, are you trying to tell me that you don't want me to marry Paul? Skipping school to hang out with her friends and would frequently drink a lot to cope with her problems. Margot seemed to have everything, but her wild partying lifestyle came with a range of disorders. By the time she reached 20, Margot was facing various psychological problems, such as depression, bulimia, and epilepsy. But no matter how much she partied, it wouldn't make her feel any better. Hemingway had strained relationships with members of her family. She had a tense relationship with her mother, though they reconciled prior to Byra's death from cancer in 1988. She also competed with her younger sister Marielle, who received greater accolades for her acting. In the 1990s, Hemingway alleged that her father Jack had molested her as a child. Her father and stepmother Angela resented the allegations and stopped speaking to her. Angela told People magazine, Jack and I did not talk to her for two years. She constantly lies. The whole family won't have anything to do with her. She's nothing but an angry woman. Margot Career Margot was around her late teens when she made the decision to start a modeling career and make her own path by moving to New York City, which is considered the center of the fashion industry. Hemingway entered the fashion scene in 1974. She achieved success quite early when she landed a million-dollar contract with Fabergé Fragrance Babe and soon became one of Hollywood's premier models. 
She appeared as the cover girl in various magazines like Cosmopolitan and Harper's Bazaar. In 1975, a Time issue deemed her as one of the new beauties. Give me everything, right in the left. Stretch your foot. Followed by an American Vogue issue the same year which titled her as New York's new supermodel. Using her fabulous and budding career in modeling, Margot Hemingway entered Hollywood at the age of 21. Although her name may have given her an initial advantage, this newcomer definitely put in the effort to succeed. Her stunning looks and magnetic personality quickly set her apart in the fiercely competitive industry. In the early 1970s, Margot Hemingway became really famous all over the world, and everyone wanted her to be their supermodel. She was featured on the front pages of well-known magazines such as Vogue, Elle, and many more. She had a really cool and stylish appearance that was super popular in the 1970s. The fashion industry was really impressed with Margot and saw her as the perfect inspiration for their beauty standards. Regrettably, she also attracted the attention of a dangerous individual, Errol Watson, who was a wealthy middle-aged heir to a restaurant empire. Watson noticed the young person who was 19 years old at the hotel and couldn't stop looking at them. Watson and Hemingway happened to meet each other by chance, and their relationship quickly became intense. Within just four months, Margot had already moved in with him in his apartment in Manhattan. These days, that definitely wouldn't be acceptable, but in the past, his wealth allowed people to overlook it. For Margot, this move wasn't just about love. She also had dreams of becoming a model and believed that Watson could assist her in achieving that goal. Margot toxic relationship with Errol Wetson. Watson, being older and wealthier, had significant influence over Hemingway. In fact, she openly acknowledged the troubling nature of their relationship. While Hemingway was searching for opportunities, Watson took on the role of her manager and began telling her what clothes to wear. He went to great lengths to criticize every imperfection in her body. Yeah, it's a good idea to record it. Yes, 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 record it for posterity. Now, this is going to be the arrival, or the departure exploiting her obvious lack of confidence to exert control over her. Clearly, despite her excessive alcohol consumption, she continued to drink heavily. In her frequent state of lingering hangovers, Hemingway concluded that the most suitable course of action for her was to actually wed her domineering partner. Can you believe it? The unlikely pair got married way back in 1975. You gotta stop meeting like this. Well, then buy me dinner. Quite a shocker, right? Unfortunately, things didn't improve, and within a span of three years, by 1978, the couple decided to end their marriage. Even though things weren't going well in her personal life, Hemingway's career reached its peak. However, like any other achievement, Margot had to pay a significant cost to reach her current status. Margot started struggling with disorders at an early age. The model was doing really well in her career and gaining a lot of attention, but it was becoming increasingly clear that she was dealing with mental health issues. Even though many of her fans and supporters only learned about her mental health challenges during her career, the reality is that she began grappling with mental disorders as a teenager. Margot showed exceptional talent from a young age, and it was clear that she had a bright future ahead of her. However, there was one issue that bothered her for a long time, her mental well-being. When Margot was going through her teenage years, she started facing some difficulties with her mental health, while her friends were busy enjoying their youth and making plans for the future. It's really sad that she started having health problems at a young age when she was still figuring out her path in life and what she wanted for her future. During her teenage years, she faced a lot of challenges with mental health issues such as depression, bulimia, and epilepsy. These challenges must have been really tough, especially for a young teenage girl, but Margot was determined to make the most out of life, despite her difficulties. Once she gained fame, her health problems couldn't be kept secret from the public. Before we knew it, her struggles with addiction and depression were all over the news. Even though she was featured on the covers of popular magazines like Elle, Cosmopolitan, and Vogue, she was struggling with her mental well-being in private. Over time, her mental well-being started to have a noticeable impact on her professional life. But what really caught people's attention about the famous supermodel was her incredible determination. Despite facing personal challenges, she was able to establish a thriving modeling career. Even though Margot went through a difficult childhood with alleged abuse from her father and struggled with her mental health, she didn't let these experiences hold her back in life. Ago, and he hadn't seen it. Now, I called him last night, he was watching the basketball finals, and he didn't say anything because the basketball finals were on. Margot, rise to fame.
The fashion industry's constant push for flawlessness had a negative impact on her confidence and overall well-being. During her first attempt at modeling professionally, Margot Hemingway was told that she would never be successful in the modeling industry if she didn't change her physical appearance. She was required to clean up her eyebrows and lose 20 pounds to look more like model material. However, Margot was not discouraged by the doubters and naysayers. She believed that she was capable of making it big in the modeling world, and she did just that. The superstar had a really interesting childhood because she grew up with lots of family around her. They moved from Oregon to Cuba and then to San Francisco. During her childhood, she had the opportunity to live on her grandfather's farm and her godmother's farm. Her life took a completely unexpected turn when she moved to New York after finishing school. Would you like some tea or coffee? No, thank you. Maybe some beer. I've got a terrific French beer. Margot had a goal of becoming a really important model in New York, but getting there was a real challenge. The modeling agency she initially worked with was not pleased with her looks. Back in the 1970s, a lot of folks couldn't help but notice Margot's stunning looks and captivating personality when they saw her on magazine covers. Everyone knew that the supermodel had become incredibly successful in the modeling industry, and she was highly skilled at what she did. However, achieving success as a model was no walk in the park for her. Actually, the first modeling agency she worked with had doubts about her potential in the modeling industry. When Margot first started pursuing a career as a model, she had high hopes of becoming a well-known figure in the industry. Regrettably, her modeling agency did not share the same opinion. The agency was adamant that she needed to make specific physical changes in order to succeed as a model. Someone advised her to tidy up her eyebrows and shed 20 pounds in order to improve her chances of securing employment. But Margot didn't let their comments and suggestions discourage her. She had all the qualities of a modern supermodel. I stopped drinking altogether, and it's not. It's something I was completely ready to to give up. And just needed the right agency to support and kickstart her career. Because of this, Margot made the decision to change modeling agencies and join Eileen Ford's modeling agency. Fortunately, the agency she joined turned out to be exactly what she needed to achieve success in the modeling industry at an early stage. A few months later, Margot received an incredible opportunity when Fabergé offered her a contract worth a million dollars. They picked her to be the face of their perfume called Babe. It all started here, and it marked the start of her successful career as a model. She achieved a significant milestone early on in her career by landing a major contract. What's even more impressive is that she made history as the first fashion model to secure a million-dollar contract. She definitely showed her initial modeling agency that they were mistaken. Margot was struggling with the stress of trying to keep up with society's expectations of how she should look. Just like many others in her field, she had to deal with a lot of pressure to fit into beauty standards that were simply impossible to achieve. So basically, Margot had a really tough time dealing with eating disorders, which was something that really bothered her for her whole life. Life. She showed us how the modeling industry has a lot of problems. They try to look perfect, but it often leads to unhealthy behaviors and mental health issues. Even though Margot Hemingway was successful as a model, she had dreams beyond just walking the runway. In 1976, she appeared in her first movie called Lipstick, which caused a lot of controversy. The movie explored the difficult topics of sexual assault and violence, with Margot taking on the main character, Chris McCormick. Her performance was really intense and vulnerable, and people had mixed opinions about it. It even affected her mental health, causing her to experience depressive episodes, but I'll explain that in more detail later on. In her last few years, Margot Hemingway appeared in a number of low-budget movies such as Inner Sanctum, Love Is Like That, and Deadly Rivals, where she played minor characters. I hate In 1992, she starred in a movie called Erotica, A Woman's Secret, directed by Joe D'Amato. In 1994, she released a movie called Double Obsession. Unfortunately, the following year, she came out with another film called Vicious Kiss, which didn't do well and didn't help her struggling career. During this time, there were a lot of rumors going around about her being depressed. Back Roads to Vegas, the last movie Hemingway ever made, came out in 1999. Unfortunately, a scheduled biographical film about him was never released. Margot made a daring decision by taking on a difficult and emotionally intense role in her debut film. It showed how she was really determined to prove that 
she's not just known for her fashion sense and looks. Lipstick was a game changer for her career, giving her the opportunity to enter the world of acting. Unfortunately, things didn't go as expected. When Margot was drunk and chosen to be in the movie Lipstick, she thought it would be a good idea for her 14-year-old sister, Marielle, to play her sister in the movie. She made a nice gesture, but unfortunately, when Lipstick was released, critics didn't have many good things to say about Margot's acting and performance. They compared her to her younger sister, who they thought was the new rising star. It's when somebody puts force on somebody to have sex. Margot's relationship with her sister. Due to a significant age gap of seven years, Margot and Marielle never had a close relationship. The younger sibling didn't like Margot's partying habits and kept their distance. However, the main reason for their growing animosity was their striking resemblance, which led to constant comparisons and ultimately fueled a fierce competition between them. Marielle openly expressed her strong dislike for being confused with Margot, and when Marielle's fame skyrocketed, Margot's reaction was extremely self self-destructive. Margot Hemingway became more and more insecure when she saw her little sister outshining her in her own game. This led her to rely more on substances. As time went on, her relationship with Marielle evolved from simple, immature jealousy to something more complex and mature, as Marielle later described it. Hey Chris, this is my music teacher, Mr. Stewart. So basically, everyone goes through some kind of sibling rivalry, but Margot's situation was way more intense. To cope with it, she decided to get involved in another romantic relationship. The older Hemingway got married to the Venezuelan director Bernard Baron Fuchs, who she had been in a close relationship with since her first marriage. Like many aspects of Margot's life, the newlyweds started off with a lot of excitement and moved to Paris to experience a glamorous lifestyle. Um, which one should I answer first? The last one first? The problem with food... Things are actually quite complex, and avoiding the situation won't make it go away for her. Margot Hemingway's personal struggles were a clear indication of the difficulties and obstacles experienced by individuals associated with the Hemingway family. Margot's drug use. As she dealt with the pressures of being famous and the burden of her family's reputation, she resorted to using alcohol and illegal drugs as a way to cope. Margot struggled with alcoholism and addiction throughout her life. She tried to get away from the stress of her job and the weight of her family's past, but ended up getting caught in a dangerous cycle of drug and alcohol abuse. These problems really affected her relationships and had a big impact on her physical and mental well-being. In 1984, Margot Hemingway experienced a tragic event when her half-sister, Joan Hemingway, took her own life. This devastating loss made Margot's own mental health issues even worse, intensifying the emotional pain she was already experiencing. It's a powerful reminder that even people who appear to have everything can struggle with their own personal battles and deep sadness. Even though Margot faced her own challenges, she never gave up on her dream of becoming an actress. She was in a bunch of movies and TV shows, like Killer Fish and Double Obsession. Although she didn't achieve the same level of success in acting as she did in modeling, her career showcased her ability to bounce back and persevere in the face of challenges. Margak's Second Shot and Reconciliation with Mother in the 1980s, Hemingway attempted to make a comeback in Hollywood by working on two movies, the 1982 comedy They Call Me Bruce and the ensemble romantic comedy Over the Brooklyn Bridge. Even though it didn't receive the desired attention, it appeared that things were moving in the right direction. Unfortunately, it appears that Margot was involved in a terrible accident while skiing in Austria. It seems like she had a stroke of bad luck. She was seriously hurt for almost a year and on top of that, her healing process made her gain 75 pounds, bringing her weight close to 200. It was really tough for someone who always had problems with how they looked at the mirror. It was enough to push them to their breaking point. Oh, you needn't bother, officer. They do that for us at the hotel. As Margot Hemingway got older, she started speaking up about mental health and how it affected her and her family. She wanted to raise awareness and share the difficulties they had gone through. There wasn't much left in Margot's mind and emotions at this moment. And as a result, her marriage fell apart once again. In 1985, she ended her marriage with her second husband and embarked on a journey of independence, attempting to make ends meet on her own. However, these actions only made her situation worse, causing her to continue spiraling downwards until the very end without any chance of escape. 
she felt extremely depressed and mentally overwhelmed to the point where the model had to acknowledge something she had never done before. She required professional assistance. People who don't trust people are usually people who can't be trusted. In 1987, she went to the well-known Betty Ford Center for treatment. However, it appeared to be a short-term solution for a more significant issue. Although it provided some relief for her addiction, it didn't tackle the root causes of her mental illnesses. After Margot Hemingway completed her program at the center, she appeared completely transformed and displayed a noticeable improvement in her physical appearance. Society would likely label her as being in a state of supposed good health. Hemingway was really confident that after putting in all that effort to improve herself, her second comeback would be really easy. However, she had high expectations for herself that were not based in reality. When these expectations were not met, her depression resurfaced. One of the most difficult aspects is not having a network of people to rely on for help and assistance. Actually, she never really got along with her parents. It's surprising that a mother wouldn't support her daughter no matter what. But unfortunately, that's what happened. Darling, this is going to be the most wonderful honeymoon anybody ever had. Since Margot began getting more acting jobs, she has been visiting her home less and less, and now they hardly have any contact with each other. After Margot completed her rehabilitation program, another unfortunate event would reunite them. Hemingway's mother was found to have cancer, and she had to go through a series of tests and treatments. In 1988, just before time ran out, the mother and daughter were able to mend their relationship. Unfortunately, Buck passed away not long after, leaving Margot with yet another loss to grieve. After her mother passed away, Hemingway managed to get a role in a French film called Love in C Minor. However, the film didn't receive much attention and she didn't receive any offers from Hollywood. I've been on the phone to Rio all day. They never got there. Well, they must have stopped somewhere along the way. So Margot decided to handle the situation herself and seek the attention she desired, even if it was in a negative way. In the spring of 1990, she decided to take a nude photo for Hugh Hefner's Playboy magazine. The news quickly spread that she was acting strangely, but no one thought to offer her any assistance. Instead, they dismissed her eccentricities with fondness, much like they did with Hemingway's quirks. That was a really big mistake that had serious consequences. Margot recently relocated to a cozy apartment in Santa Monica, California. The close-knit community of kind and supportive neighbors could have been exactly what Hemingway needed to regain her footing in life. Once again, she couldn't catch a break from the curse. Shortly after Hemingway settled into her new home, her neighbors started noticing some concerning indications. One of Hemingway's neighbors noticed that she seemed troubled and looked exhausted when they spoke to her outside her apartment. Everyone was confused about how to interpret this, except for one of her close friends who understood it. The Hemingway Curse, Margot's Death. Margot's longtime friend, Judy Stabile, noticed that Margot was experiencing some unusual shifts in her mood, so she made a point to reach out to her every day. Unfortunately, towards the end of June, Hemingway suddenly stopped responding to her phone calls. This led Stabile to decide to visit her in person. Unfortunately, it was a little too late. When Judy arrived at Margot's apartment that day, she noticed that the model's car was parked in the driveway. However, despite knocking on the door, nobody seemed to be home. She had a strong sense that something was really going wrong. Come on in, Mr. Stewart. Hi. Feeling extremely worried, she quickly found a ladder nearby and peered through the bedroom window of the house. Inside, she saw her friend Margot lying completely still on her bed, still wearing her nightgown and with her arms crossed, as if she could wake up any second, even though she couldn't and wouldn't. She called emergency services immediately, but unfortunately, there was nothing they could do to revive her friend. It was clear that she had passed away during the night, even though the initial autopsy results for Margot didn't provide a clear explanation. The toxicology report later revealed that Hemingway had taken too much phenobarbital. She was finally experiencing the infamous Hemingway curse. Feeling extremely down, she tragically took her own life. Initially, Margot's sister Marielle was in a state of disbelief and strongly rejected the idea that her sister had ended her own life. When Angela's father and stepmother learned about her death, they seemed to react with a calm and reserved demeanor, not expressing much emotion. Regardless of their belief in the curse's authenticity or their awareness of Margot's past, they were unfortunately aware that it was destined to occur. Could you call me from Seattle? Bye-bye.
The reported suicide of Margot Hemingway caused a lot of attention and was widely covered, reviving the belief in the curse once again. The Hemingway curse has gained a lot of attention because it's seen as a pattern of suffering and tragedy that runs in the family. It's really important to be careful when looking at these claims, but there are clear patterns of mental health issues in the Hemingway family. This makes us wonder how much genetics and the environment play a role in shaping the lives of family members. When Margot was a kid, her grandfather Ernest had a really well-known death, but it's crazy how many of her other family members also died in a similar way. During the last years of her life, her career was confined to merely signing for Playboy magazine and working for a psychic telephone hotline run by her cousin, Adil Hemingway. Hemingway died without a probable cause, and her death was initially debated by her sister Marielle as an epilepsy seizure. Over the course of seven years, including Margot herself, time went by. It's up to you to determine whether there is truly a curse, or if it's something that is passed down through their genes. Nothing to chat about. Yeah, I know, but you sound uncertain, and that worries me. Are you sure this is the guy that raped you? Margot Hemingway had a really interesting life. She was known for her beauty and fame, but unfortunately, her story also had its fair share of tragedy. She became famous all around the world for her incredible talent and charm in the fashion and modeling industry. However, her own battles with addiction, depression, and the burden of her family's reputation overshadowed her incredible journey. When we think about Margot Hemingway, we realize how delicate life can be and how crucial it is to show compassion and support when dealing with mental health issues. The Hemingway curse is a topic that people argue about. Margot's story shows how important it is to talk openly about mental health and to not keep these issues hidden. Margot's impact goes beyond the tragic events she experienced. She is remembered for her strength, perseverance, and commitment to fighting for what she believed in, even when faced with challenges. Her life shows us that even when faced with tough challenges, we can find the strength to make a big difference and bring attention to issues that impact everyone. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.